When a video tutorial starts with the words like pull configuration, push configuration, orchestration, provisioning, config management, item potency, these are really, really big words and a little bit jargon too. How do you expect that a user is going to understand any tutorial with these kinds of jargon? And if somebody understands these jargon, he probably won't be watching the video. Hey there everyone, Hitesh here, back again with another video. And in this video, we are going to talk about Ansible. Ansible is one of the most popular tool and especially very popular in the community of DevOps. Today, I'm going to demystify what Ansible is, what is the problem that it's trying to solve, and will give you the most easiest, understandable explanation of what Ansible is, what problem it solves, and where you can use it. In this video, not only I will give you a clear explanation of what Ansible is, but I'll also give you a resource, maybe in case you have decided I want to learn further on the Ansible, you will get a full in-depth guide and knowledge about Ansible and a resource that you can refer after this video. Before we understand what Ansible is, we need to understand what is the problem that Ansible is trying to solve. So we're going to take that now. And also, let me uh, mention one more thing, that Ansible is more popular not in the software developer or software engineer community, but moreover in the production engineer community. There are different sets of challenges that are handled by the production engineer, the people who takes your software or your web application and move it onto the production environment, the virtual machine, AWS, Google Cloud, or whatever your favorite cloud provider is. And there are different set of challenges that are handled by these production engineer. Ansible is one of the most favorite tool for all these production engineer. But before we move further, now let's go on to computer and talk about what Ansible is and what is the problem that Ansible is solving. So Ansible is a tool that helps you to either move things into production or the things which are already in the production, there are some config management or there are some updation that needs to be made in the production. It just helps you to automate that task. And that's why I've written here, Ansible automate that. And yes, I will be avoiding the terms like orchestrations and item potency and all these jargon. So I'll be talking in the plain, very simplistic possible language. So let me first introduce you to the scenario of why Ansible is necessary. If you have watched one of my earlier videos where I talked about Nginx, or probably you are familiar with that. Now you should know that by this time that it's not about just one machine which is handling your database, your front end, your back end and everything. Usually we prefer to deploy multiple machines so that either load can be balanced in the production or maybe some other reasons as well. Maybe you want to have a separate mail server, say separate database server. So it is very clear that you are not gonna be putting everything in just one virtual machine or one uh, instance. There would be many, that is all clear to us. But let's just say there is something that you want to change in all the machine. Maybe there is an version update in the operating system from Ubuntu 18 to Ubuntu 18.5 or, or 19. The version is now changing and you want to make that version change. Or probably there is some updated feature that you have launched in your application and your application is running in three different computers to have a load balancing. What you're gonna do at that time, you probably will use an approach which in which you are gonna have a system and you're gonna go ahead and use SSH or any other ways to connect those system. You're gonna log into each system every single time and will perform that update. Surely possible, a lot of people does that and still this is one of the most used way by a lot of people, but this is not a feasible approach when you are scaling up quite a lot. You have fleets of servers and probably you are having 100 different machines. That is not even possible and even if you're doing it, this is going to take a whole lot of your time. And by the time, there is also a possibility that not all of your users are getting all that updated features. Welcome to Ansible to solve this problem. Ansible helps us to actually put up a config file and then Ansible will automatically be connected to all different machines and will uh, release those updates, whether that's operating system patching, uh, maybe an OS upgrade, maybe a configuration update, maybe you want to run an update on just the database, whatever you want to do, Ansible comes in between and it does that. Now, before we talk and explore a little bit more on Ansible, I need you to understand that there are three important things on which Ansible is actually based or is relying a lot. The first one is its declarative syntax. And I'll come, on, come back on to these topics as well in a minute. The other one is agentless. And the another one is it is very aware of what is already there. 
in the place of aware, usually you're going to see people use a word which is idempotency. I tend to avoid that. It's a little bit jargonish. So I'm putting up an aware word to make sure that you understand what I'm trying to explain here. Okay, so before we move on and talk about all of these things, let me walk you through with another scenario example here as well. So if you want to really have even a gist of what Ansible is, you need to understand these three things. The first one is inventory. Inventory, you can see that I have this virtual machine, this virtual machine, and this virtual machine. And I'm putting up two of them in the blue and one of them in orange. You can consider this orange one as a DB or a database, probably MySQL or probably a mail server. The top two ones are the web server, probably to load balance or probably to have a back end and front end, however you want to understand that, that's totally okay. Then there is something known as playbook. I'll come back onto that as well in a second. And then in between stands the Ansible. So this is the scenario that we have right now. Now let's go back onto the presentation and uh, let me explain you what all these things are. The first thing that we talked about is inventory. Now inventory is one of the key component of how Ansible works. Ansible allows us to have a separation as well as a segregation of the servers. For example, this is the mail server and there are two of the web servers that are running. Now, obviously, just for an example, these are web servers. So probably they'll be running, both of them will be running Apache or probably Nginx. And then there are DB servers. Probably all three of them might be running uh, things like uh, MongoDB or probably MySQL. So imagine the scenario where you want to run an update in just the MySQL. You obviously don't want to touch other these things. You just want to touch these servers. And that is exactly the reason why Ansible allows us to have inventory, means categorization and put your servers into a certain category. These are very helpful in later on phases. And this is a sample example up here. Now, all what Ansible uses are YAML files. And YAML is one of the most easiest way of writing the code. I wouldn't call it as code, to be honest, it's more over a serialization. I'll talk about that in some other video, but just to understand it's really, really easy. And this is an actual code of how you categorize your servers and how you basically make an inventory. Coming back, now you understand that how the inventory is being done and how you can categorize your servers into web, maybe mail servers, maybe all of that. That is the one major component of how Ansible works. Moving a little bit more onto that, the next thing that you're going to see is a playbook. And what is a playbook? Now, playbook is actually a set of instructions. Just like in the programming world, we have loops and functions and all of that. In the world of Ansible, we have a playbook. This playbook is actually a set of instruction to perform that, hey, uh, run an OS update or probably create 10 different users. Whatever you really want to do, this is what you mention in the playbook. So I hope you get the idea that this is the playbook. Now, how does it work and how this all actually comes all together? In the playbook, you define all the things that you want to do. Probably you want to do an OS upgrade and that upgrade needs to be done in all of these three uh, virtual machines, regardless of what categories they are being in. Possible, definitely possible and Ansible. Or probably there is a kind of a further subset of instruction in which you want to do an Nginx update or an Apache update. This update needs to go into this and this virtual machine only. That's where the inventory comes in. You can have a categorization and you can just put an instruction in your playbook that, hey, I want all the machines to have an update in Ubuntu, probably an Ubuntu 19. And probably you can say that after that, I want you to have an upgrade on Nginx or Apache and just update the version of it. And after that, further, you want to write another subset that once you are done with that, then I want you to take this a new app and want to deploy that. And that's totally possible with the Ansible. So it's pretty simple that we take the playbook and this playbook actually uh, talks to Ansible and we can get, just have a talk to it Ansible. And then further on top of that, Ansible actually goes ahead and perform all the operations. So this is the basic idea of how we do it. Now there's a little bit more to it. Just, just one more thing for this one. Now, sometimes you're gonna notice that since Ansible is talking to so many of the machines, you probably don't want to keep your configurations and all of these things 
in your local computer. You probably might want to use some third party machine or something like that. And that is where Ansible offers you a tower, which is like a GUI or you can use a command line as well. And it allows you to have a very graphical interpretation of how things are going on. Now with this also, I would like to introduce you our articles, series of article that we are putting up. So if you go up onto the blog.learncode online and just click on Ansible, we are putting up a lot of Ansible uh, related things up here, right from basic to everything, all of the advanced. So go ahead and read more about it. We are putting up articles, at least two articles every week. And here you can understand more in depth about what is Ansible, what are more things you should be looking up, how to deploy it, and a lot in depth about ad hoc commands, a deep dive into what inventories are. Our team is really working really hard to have all of these examples, even the codes that you can use in day-to-day uh, -day life and all of that. So this is really a basic and very vague overview of what Ansible is and how you can use it. Okay, so I hope you have enjoyed this video and I have successfully added one more tool in your belt or at least a basic definition of one more beautiful software in your software library. And make sure if you have enjoyed this video, make sure you hit that like button as well as share this video. We are also putting up a really in-depth guide on our blog and we will be putting out at least two to three uh, blogs every week. So make sure you check that out and Feel free to share them as well on your Instagram, on your Facebook, or whatever the tweet or whatever your social media you use. So go ahead and share those articles as well. We are putting a lot of effort to put up an end-to-end -end guide on Ansible so that anybody can refer that and learn Ansible completely. If you have enjoyed this video, make sure you hit that like button and consider hitting that subscribe button as well. If you're going to do it right now, that's awesome. If you don't do it right now, no worries, no hurries. You can do it later on as well. No such pressure. Let's go ahead and catch up in another such video. And yeah, join me up on Instagram as well because a lot of fun is happening there as well. Join me up on my Insta. <laughs> Baby, nunca no ni una Vivo en mi corazón